example 182. Customers at a fast food establishment want their food fast. To determine the median wait time at Taco Bell in the Miami area, 16 graduate students randomly selected 16 Taco Bell stores. Each student visited a Taco Bell store at 12.15 p.m. and ordered a crunchy beef taco, a burrito supreme, and a soda. The wait time to receive the meal was recorded for each restaurant. At the 5% significance level, test the claim that the median wait time is longer than 20 minutes. All right, so it's clearly a hypothesis test. It says test the claim that the median, now the symbol for median is going to be a little different than we've ever used before because we're looking at the population symbol for median. It's actually this Greek symbol eta, so it looks like a fancy n. And we're saying that median should be longer or greater than 20 minutes. Okay, so 20 minutes. All right, so that's our claim. Now, from the claim, we can derive HO and HA. Remember that the same rules apply in almost every hypothesis testing scenario that we look at. If you have a greater than symbol in the claim, it makes it the same as HA, right? And then HO has to express the opposite relationship. So what's the opposite of greater than? If you're not greater than, you must be less than or equal to, right? And so it's sort of the complementary relationship. If you're not greater than 20, you must be less than or equal to it. So HO here, remember, is the claim or the hypothesis we actually run the test on. So we're going to do our hypothesis test with that HO in mind. Okay, now your next step of the process is going to be to determine N. So determine N. So what does N equal to? That's our question, right? Now you may say, well, gee, N should be obvious. It looks like if I look down here, it's clear that there's what? 16 values. We talked about 16 graduate students, so there should be 16 as N, right? That should be the answer. However, it's not that simple because in this particular procedure, we have the idea that we're testing the median, where the median basically said, look, half of the values are above the median and at least half the values are below the median. So we have that expression, right? That at least half the values are above, at least half the values are below. That's the idea of the median. So if a number is actually equal to it, it's not going to help us run our hypothesis test because 20, for example, if there's a value that's actually equal to the 20 in HO here, it's not going to give us any information. We're looking for, eventually we're going to talk about the number of values that are above the median, the number of values that are below the median. Having a number that's equal to it doesn't really contribute to that, doesn't help us. So what we want to do is eliminate any one of these values if it's ever equal to the value that you see in HO. So when you look at these wait times, if there's any one of them that's equal to 20, we have to throw it out. So you can see 15 here has to be discarded. This 15 is actually equal to 20. The 15th graduate student claims to have waited 20 minutes at the Taco Bell before he got his lunch. So because of that, uh, we're going to say that this value has to be discarded. Okay, so with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and say that the n is not 16, but rather 15. So we end up finding out that n is equal to 15. All right, now once we know n is 15, the next thing to do is get the test stat. And we're going to call the test stats S in this procedure. The S is for the sign test. And we're going to use this test stat S to be equal to, for a right-tailed case, the following description. It's going to be the number of values greater than. Where does the greater than come from? Well, greater than comes from the symbol you see in HA. So if HA is using a greater than, in this case the HA and the claim are the same, that's why I was pointing at the claim, but the idea is again, if the, if the HA has a greater than, it means the case a right-tailed test, and so because HA tells us it's a right-tailed test, we're going to use the same idea here in our test stat. So S is going to be the number of values greater than the number we see here, which is 20. So a number of values greater than what you found in HO. The number in HO and HA in this problem is the same. That's usually the way it is. So if it says greater than 20, then this should say greater than 20. And S just counts up how many of those values meet that criteria. All right, so let's think about that then. Looking at this list, how many of the numbers are greater than 20? Well, 23 is greater than 20, so that's 1. These two aren't, but that one is. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I count 10 values greater than 20. All right, so if you want to double check, you can count up to see how many values are less than 20. Since our n is 15, we should find 5. And sure enough, I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that are less than 20. Okay, so the amount that's greater than is 10, and then we now have our test stat. 
That seems easy enough, right? The only thing left to do then after we have our test data is to then next look to see how to decide whether we should reject the null hypothesis or whether we should leave it alone and not reject it. So to do that, we usually use a critical value. We're not going to use that here, though. Instead, we're going to use the p-value approach. To use the p-value approach, we have to understand how this would be distributed. And what I'm going to say is that this variable has a binomial distribution where the probability of success is 50%. So what do I mean by probability of success? Well, S was supposed to count the number of values greater than 20, right? Well, what's the chance that a value is greater than 20? If you assume that HO, the equality part, is true. In other words, if you assume that the median is actually equal to 20, what's the probability that a value is greater than 20? Well, the median is the 50th percentile, meaning half the values are above, half the values are below. So if that's true and 20 is our median, that would mean the chance that something is greater than 20 is 50%, because half the numbers are above it if the median really is 20. All right, great. So if that's the logic, then we know it's binomial in nature. And what we're going to use for the p-value approach is always the same. So in all problems that we work out, we're always going to have the same logic for the p-value. The p-value for the sign test, which is what we're doing here, the p-value is always going to be simply this, the probability that some binomial random variable is greater than or equal to the test stat that you came up with in the, in the problem above. So in this case, for our problem, it's going to be the probability that a binomial random variable with a p of 0.5 and an n of 10, an n of 15, pardon me here, is going to be greater than or equal to s, and s here is 10. So that's what we're trying to figure out. And that's the p-value for every sign test we encounter. It's always going to be the probability that we have you know, a binomial random variable be greater than or equal to the test stat that we found, right? assuming that the p is 0.5 and the n is 15. In this case, in other problems, those n values will change, but the p will always be 0.5. Okay, so there's our, our p-value approach. Now, you may wonder why it is what it is there, and the logic of that's pretty simple. It's just, again, saying this idea, you know, what's the chance that we have at least as many values greater than 20 if the median was actually 20, right? So what's that probability? Now, how do we work this one out? In order to work this out, we'd have to use either the binomial formula, which would be very time consuming, or we could use software, which would be perhaps the easiest. Or if we don't have access to software, we have to use the binomial table. The binomial table will work here as long as our sample size is something we can find on the table. But to do the binomial table, I want to remind you that the table doesn't do at least type probabilities. So in an earlier section of the notes, we covered how to use the binomial table. And we saw that it doesn't count up, right? It can't give you this answer. This answer is what? Um, basically, x could either be 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. It doesn't do that, though. All the table can give you is from a given number down, right? So what we want to do is rewrite this so it's equivalent. So what I'm going to do is show you a little idea just once. I'm going to show this to you. Remember that the sum of all the probabilities, the probability that x is equal to 0 plus the probability that x is equal to 1 plus dot, 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 the probability that x is equal to 9 plus the probability that x is equal to 10, right? Plus the probability dot, 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 probability that x is equal to, let's say, uh, 15, or 15 in this case, that's our sample size. Sorry, how to get all the way to our sample size. So this sum of all the probabilities, the probability that x is 0, probability that x is 1, the probability that x is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 15, 14, 50. If you add those all together, you have to come up with 1 because it's all the possible probability that's out there, right? Now what we want, we want to find this, right? We're looking for the probability that x is from either 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, or 15. We're trying to figure out that probability and add it all up because that's our p-value in this problem. Well, if I were to try to get that with a binomial table, it wouldn't work. I can't get it directly. So what I can do is actually instead calculate this quantity, right? And if I do that, if I calculate it for this quantity, that will end up giving me essentially the probability that I don't want, because I'm looking for 10 to 15, and this is giving me 9 to 0. But if I take away everything I don't want from 100%, it should give me exactly what I want. So in other words, if I do 1 minus the probability of, how would you describe this? This is the idea that x is less than or equal to 9. That should give me the answer I'm looking for, which is the probability that x is greater than or equal to 10. So there's the way we're going to do the problem. I'm going to go to the table, the binomial table, and I'm going to actually look up 
n is equal to 15, and then I'm going to look up p is equal to 0.5, and I'm going to go down to where it says k is equal to 9, and that's going to give me the probability that I need for right here, and that'll be 1 minus that. So let's go to the table and check that out now. Okay, so in our binomial table, we need to find n equals 15, so I think that's not on the first page, and it's not on the second page either. Let's see if it's on the third page of our table. Remember, this table is quite long. It's got several pages because we have several n's. Sure enough, n equals 15 is on the third page here. We're going to be looking for k equals 9 and p equals 0.5. So here's the 0.5 position, and 9 is all the way down here. We get 0.8. Four, nine. So looking in the ninth row, we get 0.849. Okay, so we found the answer from our table to be 0.849. So in the end, this overall probability will be equal to 1 minus that, right? So 1 minus 0.849. All right, so since the probability that x is less than or equal to 9 is 0.849, and we're going to do 1 minus that, we'll end up with the final result, the answer for this question, which is our p-value, of 0.151, or in other words, 15.1%. So that is your p-value for the problem. Now, once you know that that's your p-value, you have to compare that p-value against alpha to make your final decision. Before I do that, though, I just want to give you the structure of this, because I know the explanation that we went through to explain why we had to do the p-value in this way might have been a little confusing. It's difficult, even though it was covered in an earlier section of the notes. Um, I just want to basically give you then a generic formula that you can always use for the p-value. So we spoke about the fact that this is always your p-value. I've set up the hypothesis testing so that for all the sign test problems you face, you'll always be doing your p-value in this way. And then what you can do is you can just set up a formula then based on what we just did, to say, hey, the p-value is always going to be equal to also this. So let's say that the p-value is always going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to s minus 1. So that's a little bit to remember, but hey, it's a formula, so you would never have to rethink it from scratch every time. So if you want to know what your p-value is, and the p-value is always the probability that x is greater than or equal to your test stat, that's going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to s minus 1. So in our case, s was 10, so it's 1 minus the probability x is less than or equal to 9, and that's what that works out to be. So at that point, you could just go to your chart, you know, look up the values that we looked up, which are, you know, in this case, going to be, for this problem, it was 15.5 and k being 9, this number here. You do 1 minus that, and it gives you your p-value. So I think if you want to memorize that, it'll always work. Or if your professor lets you use a formula card, you could maybe write that in. And that would be the um, technique or the method to find the p-value for all of these problems, right? For every sign test problem you face. OK, so now that we have this, we're going to go ahead and make our comparison against alpha. So let's do that. If your p-value is 15.1%, how does that compare against the alpha of 5% in this problem? Well, of course, it's bigger than 5%, right? So we're going to say, in this case, the p-value which is equal to 15.1% is, of course, clearly greater than the alpha, and the alpha is what? 5%. And so because that's greater than our alpha value, what we're going to say in this problem is that we should not reject the null hypothesis. So you're going to say, do not reject HO, right? Do not reject HO, and therefore do not support HA do not support HA. All right, so with that in mind, then what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that, you know, we're not going to reject HO and not support HA, so we don't support the claim, right? So we do not support the claim. We don't support the claim that it takes longer than 20 minutes to get this particular meal at Taco Bell at 12.15 p.m. We don't support that idea. All right, now you may say, well, gee, there were a lot of values that were over that 20-minute mark. There were 10 values out of 15 that we looked at or counted, right? So that's a lot of them that came up there being greater than the value of 20. But, you know, that's not strong enough evidence because our test is weak. So the sign test is a very weak test. We're going to keep that in mind, and we're going to look at more powerful non-parametric procedures later on. But 
this is the first one we're learning, and it's actually the weakest of all of them. And so what that means is that uh, it's going to be harder for us to reject the null hypothesis. So while this evidence may have been strong enough in another procedure, it won't be strong enough for the sign test. The sign test sort of needs overwhelming evidence to be able to reject the null hypothesis. So we'd say it's a very conservative test. In other words, it doesn't like to overturn the null hypothesis. It takes a lot of strong evidence to be able to do that. So this S would have to be larger still before we'd be able to reject the null hypothesis at a reasonable alpha level, like 5%. Of course, if our alpha level was 20%, then the p-value would have been small enough to reject, but um, that's a value that we you know, almost never use. So of course, in this case, it looks like, um, based on the results here, you know, that perhaps maybe it is longer than 20 minutes, but this hypothesis test is unable to show it because it's a weak test. Okay, so you might say, well, we weren't able to reject the null hypothesis, but it could be because the test is weak.